Hey guys, my name is Katerina Langold. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about procrastination. This is something that happens with most of us. We know that we're supposed to do X, which is important, which is valuable, that will help us grow. And instead of that, we go and spend our time browsing YouTube or browsing our Instagram or just doing some, something really irrelevant. Why do we do that? And most importantly, how can we change that? So in this video, I want to really deconstruct the whole process of procrastination. What happens in our brain? How does it compare to perfectionism? Another thing that many people don't quite understand, and I think they're actually the two sides on one coin. And then I want to talk about procrastination and how it's related to burnout, because a lot of think, people think that they're lazy, or that they're procrastinating while in fact they have a burnout. And I want to share with you some ways how you can identify which one is what. And then, most important part, I want to talk about ways you can address procrastination. I am a chronic procrastinator. And so those methods really helped me push through and uh, helped me a lot in my career. Even though I'm a procrastinator, I was able to complete several degrees by the age of 23. I went to MIT. I, um, built a company that was later acquired by an aerospace company in Silicon Valley. So I procrastinated my way into pretty interesting things. Um, and so today I want to share with you my experience and the things that I've learned from studying a lot of neuroscience. It's a big passion of mine that I want to share with the world. So let's get started with this little part deep inside of our brain. It's called amygdala. And amygdala is a funny thing. It's really small. And it has just one single function to make sure that we survive. It's kind of the key only goal. It's like one thing that it's really supposed to do. And yet it has so much power over our behavior. Well, the thing is, the most important thing uh, from the biological perspective for us is not to achieve grand success and get those things done, but to survive. And amygdala has a lot of power to impact our decisions in an effort to make sure that we survive. So fear response is amygdala. You may think like, hey, like I'm supposed to put together a report for, you know, uh, for our accounting team and I've been procrastinating for a week. Uh, what, what, is, what is it about it in my survival? There is no survival element in this. Well, there actually is. So because amygdala is responsible for fear and survival, the thing that it likes most is certainty and predictability. So if things are certain and predictable, exactly right now, you're sitting here and here's a desk, you know, I'm, it's warm, nothing's bothering me, and there's no threat to my survival. It's predictable, it's certain, great. Even if I'm not doing anything productive, as long as it's certain, my amygdala is happy. And when you're trying to do something uh, to go and, you know, go outside of your comfort zone, the way they call it. It's actually not comfort zone, it's certainty zone, right? So the, any moment that you're trying to do something new, you are threatening this certainty and predictability of your environment. And that is why we procrastinate. We procrastinate because we are trying to do something that is not very predictable, that is not very certain. So everything that is clear like, you know, when you go and browse your Instagram, there is no unpredictability in it. If you think of it, it's very straightforward. So the more complicated and the less certain the task is, the higher the chances of your amygdala being triggered and saying, hey, 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 we're fine right now. Let's just not mess up with it. So our fear response turns against us and blocks useful behavior because it just doesn't want to mess up with the certainty of the moment. So instead of using the word comfort zone, I actually prefer saying certainty zone, right? Because we may be very uncomfortable and very unhappy, but we are surviving. And as long as we are su surviving, our amygdala would be trying to keep the status quo. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, how it's related to perfectionism, because a lot of people really don't connect the dots. And I think that those things that are just two sides of one coin. And I want to read for you a quote by Leo Tolstoy. It's a famous Russian writer and philosopher and thinker, and I completely disagree with it. <laughs> so that's why I want to cite it to you, because I think a lot of people talk about it and they believe it's true. 
And I'm kind of thinking that there might be some procrastination and perfectionism related stuff that is blocking your growth. So let me read it. If you want to do something, do it well. If you can't or do not want to do it, better don't start at all. So if you can't do something great, if you can't do something perfect, if you can't achieve a deal result, well, too bad. Don't start at all. Now, let me think. When I made my very first step, when I started walking, wasn't it a very awesome, perfect step that I made? Probably not. I probably went, you know, face forward after making this very first step. Does it mean I should, shouldn't even try? Like, don't even start at all? I don't think so. I think most things we do in life, when we start, we don't do it well. And if we avoid doing things that we can't yet do well, we would never begin. And here is procrastination. We oftentimes use perfectionism as a cover-up so that we can wait until we are fully prepared for the unknown. So what is perfectionism? We're waiting for the perfect moment or we are expecting perfect result. Neither perfect moment nor perfect result exist in the universe. Something can always be improved. And there are always things that are not ideal for starting something. When I started my first company, I was 19, no, actually it was my second company. My first company was when I was 16, but my first tech company was when I was 19 years old. And you know what? I had no clue. I certainly wasn't ready. Guess what? I was never ready. When I sold it, I was 23 years old. I became vice president of an airspace company. We were launching satellites. I wasn't ready either. You are never ready. And meeting more and more people who have achieved amazing things in their life, I've learned that they were never ready. Also, the circumstances in their life were never perfect, yet they continued doing what they believed they should be doing. So they avoided perfectionism because perfectionism doesn't actually move you forward. What moves you forward is small, imperfect steps that you take one after another and learning from those steps. So oftentimes we use perfectionism as a cover-up for our procrastination because we say like, hey, well, I can, I can start this business, I need to get an MBA. And a lot of people who are starting their businesses, instead of actually going out and talking to their customers, they're like building those crazy big financial models and building spreadsheets, doing the safe things. Preparation is the safest thing you can do because you don't have to go out. And this is what amygdala wants. So this is why we get stuck in the cycle of endless preparation and, and pre-pre-preparation where we don't get anything real done, but instead we focus on those safe activities. Does it sound familiar to you? All right. The other thing I want to talk about is resource. Our energy, uh, our psychological resources, do, are we actually, do we actually have it in us to get done what we want to do? Because a lot of people believe that they are procrastinating while in fact they're, they're facing burnout. And so here's a picture, and I don't know if you did it as a child. Uh, I grew up in Russia and it was very common. So you take a magnifying glass and you go out on a sunny day and then you make sure that the sun goes through and, and, and like the, the lens focuses the energy of the sun in a single point. And then you can do some wood burning and you can make some pretty things with, with that. Interestingly, there are two things that are required in order to like make this whole beautiful art happen. You need energy of the sun and you need focus, right? I think in life it's very similar. So the magnifying glass is our capacity to focus our attention, to so get the right things done, right? Like focusing our effort on what matters. But there is another component, which is our energy, right? If you go out with this magnifying glass on a cloudy day, there's no sun, there's no art. And the same applies to our life. We oftentimes like over obsess on like skills, how to be focused, how to like stop this and start that. But if we are lacking energy, the resources for actually getting it done, the, the solar energy, if you will, uh, then nothing would really happen. And I think a lot of people forget about it. So I wanna give you a very simple indicator uh, of procrastination versus lack of resources, like emotional, physical, psychological, or burnout, right? So when you're procrastinating, you're avoiding only things that push you out of the certainty zone. So 
you have all the energy under the sun to do some useless things. Like I, I love um, you know, putting things in places in my house. Like if I'm avoiding doing something, I start all of a sudden cleaning up. Like that's my favorite thing to do. Cleaning up is safe and predictable. And so I have energy for that. When you are facing burnout, you don't have energy for simple routine things. And that's the big difference. So make sure that what you call procrastination isn't actually burnout because the way you address this is completely different. Burnout requires recovery. Procrastination requires methods, which we're going to talk about in a second. But this is a really important distinction. If you are not capable of doing even the simplest and the most kind of mundane and predictable and safe thing just that can't possibly trigger your amygdala, then it's not procrastination. This is burnout, okay? Now, let's move to the methods. And before we do that, I have a quick request for you guys. There's a like button here below. If you click it, then more people will see this video and that will help a lot. It's spreading the message. I record videos every week. I do it with so much love and desire to bring something valuable and share my experience with you guys. So if you click this button, you will help a lot for others to discover it. So thank you for doing that. And let's move to methods. So method number one, I love this one. So a question for you guys. If you have to choose, your brain has to choose between two things. One is urgent and the other one is important. Which one would your brain pick? What do you think? Guess what? Neither of them. It will pick the one task that it understands really well, the safe one, the predictable one, the one that will cause the least resistance to amygdala. So now that we know that, we understand that in order to maximize the chances, we actually get something done. We should reduce the uncertainty in any task. So if you formulate the task in a way that is unclear what actually has to be done, then the chances of it of completion are going down substantially. So in your to-do list, you have to have very clear directions of what you have to do. So if you need to file your taxes, don't put a task filing taxes. There's a lot of pieces in there. Break it down. Break it down into chunks, 25 minutes or less, and really specify. Get this form from, um, you know, from the finance team. Like get this. Uh, verify, like break it down into very clear directions. Because if your brain understands really well with lots of clarity and lack of uncertainty, right? With lots of certainty, what it needs to do, the resistance of amygdala is going to be so much lower. So unclear tasks, vague tasks, the way you formulate them causes our brain to search for alternative things to occupy itself with. So first thing, make sure your tasks are very specific. And I'm using my planner. Uh, it's a planner based on agile sprints that uh, allows me to specify what exactly I'm going to do on a daily basis. It uh, is used for three week sprints, so you can actually iterate and experiment with your stuff. It's a really cool method. About 200,000 people at this point are using it. Maybe depending on when you watch this video, maybe more. So I highly recommend that you check it out. It's completely free. There is a link below. You can download a PDF version with all the instructions. Check it out. It will really help you break down your tasks and uh, get a lot of things accomplished. So number two, method number two. It's really important when you are trying to accomplish something and in what is your environment. The thing is our amygdala can be in part um, controlled by our prefrontal cortex. So that's the part, the newer part of the brain, the, the thinking part, the logical part. Um, amygdala is really powerful. Like think of it as a security guard uh, in your brain. And it has a lot of power. It has like guns and everything and armor and like, you know, uh, good luck with trying to overpower it. But you still have this wonderful mechanism of logic and um, motivation that can be and willpower that can be utilized on the prefrontal cortex side. And so you can try to push your way through amygdala's resistance. But your capacity to do that changes throughout the day. And willpower is a resource that depletes pretty quickly. So throughout the day, you lose your willpower points, if you will. And the highest amount of willpower we usually have in the morning. That's why I recommend that we build habits first thing in the morning, you know, build morning routines, because we usually have much more control, much more willpower in the beginning of a day. So massive to-do lists 
are also a problem in that context because if you have lots of things on your plate, then you've basically given your amygdala a menu to choose from and it will always choose what? It will choose the most certain and the safest, most predictable things to do, which are not necessarily the most important things to do. So what I recommend that you do is you decide what would be your growth driving activities and maybe at least one, one growth driving activity, something that is not urgent, something that there is no deadline, but something you've been procrastinating on that actually delivers a lot of value for your growth, put it in your calendar first thing in the morning, at least one hour that you dedicate to growth driving activities before lunch would really change your productivity, your life direction in general. So I recommend that you try that out. And again, my my system, my planner is great for that because it specifically has a section where you identify your priority tasks for a day that you're supposed to accomplish first thing in the morning. Next, my dear friends, how to push through resistance. Because amygdala is trying to maintain status quo um, and it's it's worried about change. It's not worried about how much energy something requires. It, it's just worried about You know, if we try to do this and something unpredictable happens, who knows what happens with our survival? So what we can do is we can agree with ourselves. Like, hey, I'm just going to do this for five minutes. Because if you start something, the resistance of amygdala subsides. So if you're worried about starting, like working on your taxes, you know, agree agree with yourself, make this agreement, make a commitment. Hey, I'm just going to do it for five minutes. And if it's too bad, you know, if it's too hard, I will just drop it and like continue watching YouTube. But the interesting thing is that your amygdala, once you push through this like three, four, five minute barrier and it sees like, hey, we're still surviving. It's all good. So if your amygdala sees that, then there's no real threat and it will stop resisting. So in the same way, you can use habit stacking. So what is habit stacking? When you take a bunch of small habits, the small changes to your behavior, and then you stack them one on top of another. Why does it work? It works because you are making very small changes, five minutes at a time. And then once you're used to it, so your amygdala understands like, hey, this is safe, this is predictable, this is certain, then you can stack one on top of another and bring massive change that otherwise would cause a lot of resistance. And final method that I want to share with you, the power of the tribe. As much as our brain is capable of motivating itself, you you know, we have willpower to direct our actions, we are very much dependent on what happens around us. And I don't know if there's anything more powerful than having people around you doing things that you're afraid of doing in order to encourage you to do it. So, and it, again, like it has very clear neuroscience perspective. Like, hey, I'm living in a tribe where everybody's doing acts. So they all survive. So my amygdala quickly understands like, hey, like they're doing it. They're still surviving. It must be safe. So when you're working on some goals that result in a lot of resistance, a lot of procrastination, but you're doing it with other people, we automatically learn from their actions. In particular, if they're a little bit ahead of us, we learn from their actions that they are safe, those actions are safe, I can actually go ahead and do it. And it removes the resistance. It's so powerful. There's another component to it. There's a hormone called oxytocin, which is um, all about, you know, bonding experience. You know, it has a lot of to do with like bonding between a mother and a child, but it's actually a hormone that regulates our group dynamics and, you know, our behavior in a tribe. And the interesting thing is when we are surrounded by our people, we feel less stress because oxytocin reduces stress. And when we have less stress, less fear, our amygdala is less triggered. So we are procrastinating less. So it's much easier to push forward in a team of like-minded people who are doing somewhat similar things, facing somewhat similar challenges. That's why mastermind groups work so much, so well. This is why it's so great when you know you, you're working in a team because together it's always less scary. So that's it, guys. I just going to iterate, reiterate what I've already shared with you just to create a summary. It's actually great for your brain when you hear something and then you hear like a brief summary of it, it helps you memorize things and integrate it into your memory. So we talked about amygdala, the, our security guard that wants to make sure that we survive. And it has the fear response that blocks any uncertainty, any changes, any unpredictability that we may want for growth, for improvement, but from the amygdala's perspective, hey, it's threatening our survival, stop it. 
So uh, procrastination is nothing else but amygdala's effort to stay within certainty zone, right? Then we talked about perfectionism and how perfectionism is often a cover up for procrastination. So we can never be fully prepared. We can never wait for the perfect moment. We can never achieve perfect results. If we want to move forward, we need to take imperfect action step by step. And procrastination is something we can, you know, use in collaboration with perfectionists to say, hey, like, I'm, I'm just not yet quite ready. I just need to learn more. So we end up doing a lot of preparation work, which is very safe in order to avoid real action. Then we talked about energy and importance of having emotional resources, physical resources to actually get things done. If you have a burnout, then there is no magic. And we talked about the magnifying glass effect. And yes, focus is great. You know, knowing all these methods is great. But if you're facing burnout, if nothing excites you, if nothing cannot be done, if even mundane, simple, safe tasks are difficult for you, chances are you're close to burnout or maybe even depression. So make sure that's not the case before you're trying to push yourself, okay? Then I asked you to click the like button and then we talked about the formula for your tasks. So your, ta your brain doesn't like anything that is urgent or important. It doesn't like anything that is uncertain. So if your brain understands the task well, then the chances are that it will actually get it done quicker. So reduce task uncertainty, clear directions, 25 minutes or less, the link below in the description if you want to use my planning system. It's all free. And then we also talked about the right place and the right time, how to create the right environment. In the morning, you have higher chances of utilizing your willpower, which can you know control to some extent the security guard inside of our brain, right? Our um, amygdala. So one hour of growth driving activities, first thing in the morning, it's a great recipe. Then we also talked about pushing through resistance. So Amygdala is resisting starting things. So if you start something and do it for five minutes, chances are amygdala is going to be like, okay, looks like we are surviving. You can use that effect for habit stacking, where you can chain small habits into a long sequence. And by increasing the complexity gradually, you're actually avoiding this resistance from amygdala. And finally, we talked about the power of the tribe, something that I underestimated most of my life, but now I know how created us to work towards things in a group of like-minded people. Because when you look around and you see that everybody's doing similar things and everybody's surviving, your amygdala calms down. It also helps that we have oxytocin, which reduces stress, thus reduces amygdala's overreaction. So pushing forward in a team is much easier than doing it alone. So utilize this method, understand how the brain works and hack it so that you can move forward in life to things that matter. That is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. I hope that you can go ahead and apply it, something, at least one thing. How can you apply it today? How can you look at your life and your behavior slightly differently with love, with compassion, and with desire to grow? Uh, to grow. So that was it. Um, I publish videos on a weekly basis. If you want to stay tuned, subscribe. Here's a link below. I'll see you very soon. Bye.